On this project, we're going to replace the uh, bath faucet and the uh, pop-up plug. The pop-up plug is the uh, drainage part that you normally see when you're letting water out the sink. It goes up and down. We're going to cut the water off first. And what uh, we like to do is to get a small bucket to catch the uh, water that's still trapped into the uh, P-trap. Once we remove our P-trap, so we don't, we don't get any uh, water on the floor. And we just take this apart with our uh, channel lock pliers. And also, this is a good way to uh, unstop a clogged sink because sometimes uh, the stoppage can be right there in the uh, trap. And now we're going to remove the uh, supply lines, starting with the uh, hot side. The uh, hot is always on the left, and the cold is always on the right. Uh, this is something that uh, most people don't know. And what we're going to do here, rather than just uh, pull the supply out line out right now, uh, we're going to save that for later. Once we uh, have the sink uh, disassembled and free and able to be removed from the wall. Okay, now we have a good look at the uh, faucet that we're going to replace. And this is the caulking in the back. And what we're going to do is take our utility knife and kind of cut some of that caulking out of our way so that we can free the sink up from the uh, wall. That will make it easier, easier for us to uh, lift and remove this sink from the wall. And this would be the same procedure that uh, I would use on a uh, vanity. Rather than trying to uh, crawl up under vanity and working in a tight space, it's just as easy to pull the sink out where you have more room to work on it and do what you need to do. And then just put it back. This particular sink here is called a uh, wall hung sink. Now we're going to lift the sink straight up, wobbling it back and forth just so that we can uh, loosen it up from the uh, caulking in the back. And there's a hanger in the back that holds it. Lift it straight up off the hanger and then it's ready to remove.
Uh, this is an older sink. Uh, a lot of the newer sinks are not as heavy as this sink might be. This is this is pretty heavy here. And if you have someone to help you, it would be a good idea to uh, have them help you do this. Uh, now here's the uh, wall hung hanger, which the uh, sink is uh, mounted to and hangs on to. And this is the, uh, of course, the bottom part of the sink where we're going to start removing the uh, parts. We can start by removing the uh, trip lever to the uh, pop-up. And now we, we're removing the uh, mounting bolt, the uh, pop-up mounting bolt. And once we get the uh, mounting mo bolt loose, we, we're just going to keep loosening it and turn it until it uh, goes all the way down to the uh, last thread. <coughs> and there's a reason we're doing this. And the reason is so that it will allow us a lot of free space to move the pop-up up, up into the sink. And then we can uh, get to the other end from the other side of the sink with our uh, channel lock pliers. And what I'm doing here now is just trying to loosen it up so that I can push it up into the sink. Okay, now we've got the mounting butt bolt back up flush to the uh, sink, and now we're going to look on the other side, and you'll see what I was talking about to give us the space that we need to uh, disassemble the uh, top of the pop-up. Now you see the space that we have? We have space to get our channel lock pliers on here. And we're going to continue to hold it on the other side of the uh, sink while we take our pliers and screw this top part of the uh, pop-up off. And then we can pull the uh, pop-up assembly through. Now we've got the uh, pop-up assembly out. Give you a close-up look of what you might see. Now we're going to start by removing the uh, rest of the pop-up assembly and the uh, supply lines. 
you can see that if this was still up on the wall and we were trying to uh, work on it while it was on the wall, it would be uh, it would be a difficult task. And now that we have it on the uh, floor where we can work on it, it's a lot uh, easier to work with. And like I said, this is an older sink, and these bolts are kind of uh, recessed up in there. That's kind of a tight area to get to. It really doesn't take too much to uh, get these bolts loose. Usually just one little slip from a turn, it's, it's ready to just come right off of there. It's just the idea that the uh, recess and the depth of it is just a little hard to get to. Now, since we've had such a difficult time with the uh, crescent wrench, the adjustable wrench, and the depth of the recess, we're going to use a basin wrench. This is called a basin wrench, which is made, it's just made for sinks to get up in those tight, uh, deep, recessed areas that you can't get to with uh, most other tools and wrenches. Now we're removing the uh, trip lever to the uh, waste and overflow. And now we're ready to remove the faucet. And this been in an older sink. It's been sitting here a while, and uh, I'm gonna get these compression rings off of here. And just kind of tap the uh, bottom of it so we can kind of loosen the faucet up, and that way we can just pull it straight up and out from the other side. Take our hand and wiggle it loose. Shouldn't be too much holding this. It's just uh, some old plumber's putty. Now we've got that up and off. So here's the uh, new faucet. That's our plumber's putty. Similar to the uh, Play-Doh that you used to play with when you were younger. And we're just kind of softening it up. So that when we put the uh, 
up under the faucet it'll just seal up nice and tight and get as flat as we'd like it to get And I'm putting the putty on all the uh, holes that uh, any water could possibly go through. Just slip our faucet in place with one hand. Then with the other hand, we'll grab our uh, mounting bolts to bolt it down. The new mounting bolts, you see, uh, well, most of the times you're going to see now, they usually, they're usually plastic. And this is a new little tool they came out with. It's made just for these uh, plastic mounting bolts on um, faucets, kitchen faucet, bath faucets. This is a nice little uh, tool that they made. Makes it easy to uh, reach up under there in a deep recessed area to tighten a mounting bolt down. Okay, now we're just checking the faucet to see uh, how centered it is. Uh, if it wasn't centered, what we would do is loosen the bolts back up and just recenter it. And now we're going to put our new pop-up plug on. Basically the same way that the uh, old one came off. And again, we use our plumber's putty so that we can have a nice tight watertight seal that water won't come through on. And the mounting bolt again. Uh, this is the uh, tail piece. We're just going to take that off of there. And we're going to put the push the washer down as far as we can. Just as on the other one, we want to make sure that we have enough room to uh, get it from the other side where it's not snug up against the sink to where we can't get it. And here's our pipe dope. This is a uh, Teflon pipe dope. And I just usually like to, uh, for extra precaution, put it down by the... Uh, the big washer and also the uh, threads on the inside of the uh, pop-up.
Now again, with one hand, we're going to hold this in. And with the other hand, we're going to screw the uh, top part of the uh, pop-up assembly on. Okay, now that we have that in on, now we can take our washer and push it up against the uh, hole of the bottom of the sink and tighten our mounting nut. I'm just trying to uh, slip the uh, washer up as close as I can. It makes it a little easier to turn the mounting bolt uh, if this washer is pushed up some more. Okay, now we have it up. Now we we'll take our channel lock pliers and we're going to tight it, tighten it as tight, not as exactly as tight as we could, but tight enough to um, get a nice tight seal and not so tight that we will end up cracking the uh, ceramic uh, sink. And now here's the uh, excess putty that's oozed out from the other side. And here's our uh, trip lever, pop-up assembly for the trip lever. And this is usually the best time to put that trip lever in before you put the tailpiece in because you can see right exactly what's going on just looking through the hole. Now we're going to put our little pop-up plug in here. And we're going to make sure that the uh, trip lever, the little arm there, goes right through the uh, pop-up hold. This will control the uh, pop-up plug. Okay. We've got that. We'll just tighten it down. And you see how this works. Going to install our push pull rod for the uh, trip lever on the uh, pop up plug. And now our uh, trip, lim trip lever assembly. the clip that holds the uh, trip lever in place.
Uh, we've got it just about uh, where we like it, so we're just going to uh, tighten down on our little trip lever nut here with our adjustable wrench. Now this is the uh, tailpiece. This is the old tailpiece from the other one. It's uh, longer than the uh, new one is, so we're going to reuse this one over. Uh, you can buy these uh, tailpieces in uh, assorted sizes, and the uh, diameter of it is an uh, inch and a quarter. And I like to uh, put pipe dope on these also. I don't know if you remember uh, looking at the here we go okay see it's much shorter okay if we were to put the uh, short one back on it wouldn't reach the uh, p-trap So now let's uh, reinsert the uh, sink. Again, if you've got someone to help you, uh, it would be a good idea. The uh, newer wall hung sinks uh, normally don't come with the legs as you see there, uh, but also they're not as heavy as the uh, older wall hung sinks. That was an old American standard. Okay, now the uh, supply lines. I like to uh, put pipe dope on the uh, head of the supply line. This is the old supply line that we're going to use reuse over because the uh, bend is exactly what we want already and we know the uh, length is what we want. So we're going to put the old ones back because they're still in good shape. Now this, uh, we're going to put these supply lines back on uh, while the sink is in place uh, this would be an easy way to make it lined up and we're tightening the uh, bottom one first because usually that's uh, the harder one to get to so while you got play uh, I would tighten the uh, bottom supply line up first the bottom part of the supply line Now here we have the uh, top part of the supply line. And we're going to get up under the sink on our back of course. Okay, now we've got that in place. We're going to push our uh, compression nut up. Push our compression nut up. And tighten it as far as we can tighten it with our hands. This is a This is a pretty cramped spot here.
Okay, now it seems that we've got it started. So now we're going to uh, use our uh, basin wrench. You can see how easy it is to uh, reach up there and tighten it with the uh, basin wrench, and we're going to get it as uh, we're going to get it as tight as we can get it. To the uh, bottom part where we're going to uh, tighten this part down remember we did leave it kind of loose but partial tighten so that we can have access to it now the uh, other side the other supply line we're going to uh, put in place And once again, you can't see me now, but I am tightening the, uh, well, I screwed the uh, bottom part in. Now the, uh, and one thing before you, uh, start to, uh, install the supply lines, don't caulk the, uh, sink down right away until you're done with that, just in case you have to, uh, move the, uh, sink up and down and adjust it to get the supply line on there. And in most cases, And now we're getting close to the end. We're going to uh, replace our P trap.
turn our water back on. And here we're going to uh, pull the aerator off uh, before we uh, turn the water on, water on so that if there's any objects or anything in the water, it won't get stuck into the uh, aerator. And you can also do this on your older faucet if you have uh, low water pressure and just pull it off and uh, clean it out. Okay, we've ran the water enough to uh, push out any foreign object that might be in there. So now we're going to just put our aerator back on. And that's it. <laughs>